Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Connor Rolls, and this is the Nerd at Gods podcast, episode 154, I believe. I could take a look real quick. <laughs> Do we know, Daniel? Uh, it's 155. It's Sam, 155. at some point, I lost track. You know, we hit the hundreds, and I was just like, I don't I don't care anymore. <laughs> I don't know. Joining me as always, Daniel Never Early. What's up, gamers? Uh, I just want to give a little hit. Hey, go check out our uh, Game of the Year episode again. Uh, it was a really good episode. Doing pretty well, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then also joining us, a special guest from Bloody Brilliant Games, Sam. How you doing, Sam? I'm good, Welcome thank back. you, gentlemen. What's that? I'm good, thank you, yourselves. I'm doing good, how are you? Oh, yeah, you said you're good, shit. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we just do circle this for two hours. And... <laughs> you know, we have a guest on so rarely that every time they're here, I just feel like, you know, I've invited someone into my home and I'm just like, oh yeah. shit, I should have cleaned, you know? <laughs> I should have cleaned my house. <laughs> I should have cleaned. I needed a dust. I uh, got to get the vacuum out and all that. But yeah. Uh, Sam, I know you run Bloody Brilliant Games. I think Daniel's been on there once or twice, right? Yes. I, yes I, we did the Wii U, the Wii U video. Yes, yes Wii U I'll, video. I'll Wii U round table. Okay, cool. Awesome. Anything else you got going on over there recently? Uh, it's mainly just our weekly um, news roundups. Um, that's about it. We're kind of we're trying to find kind of space in the schedule because it's me and uh, one other person who kind of write the scripts and then um, publish them. We, there's not got time in the schedule at the moment to do like obviously game reviews and all that kind of stuff. Um, but you know when we can, we also fit in obviously uh, live streams of you know E3 for example, and then uh, industry events like uh, EGX here in the UK. So awesome, cool. Yeah, that's where you met Sims, right? It was EGX yes, yes, a couple years yeah. ago. Ooh, that's unfortunate. What's he look like in person? <laughs> <laughs> is he as short as I assume? Because like I always, in my mind, Sims is like four foot three at, on four a good three day and small hands and tiny, Man, the tiniest of hands. You know what I mean? He but cannot. also like really stubby legs. You know what I mean? <laughs> Like he's waddling like this. Yeah, I'm more than I. You, you guys know what a booba is. Yeah, no. yeah, that's what I imagine Sims is. You know, booba. <laughs> I, I will know. say I'm, I'm six two, so everyone's short compared to me. So. Oh wow, mm. damn, you're tall, huh? All right, well, cool, cool. Uh, guys, it's been another busy week in the world of video games. Oh, there it has. Yeah, yeah, very busy week, actually. Uh, this will actually be lot, the last two weeks incorporated, because last week we did our Game of the Year episode, so this week we got last week's news and this week's news, which is a lot, is a lot. We're going to get started, though. Uh, Xbox held their first developer direct yesterday, and we're going to go over the entire thing. But first things first, Sam, did you get a chance to watch the developer direct? I did indeed, yes. Yeah, Daniel, I'm assuming you watched it. Yeah, I watched it, uh, I watched it live. Yeah. Okay. Cool. What do you guys think? Just overall, not getting into the nitty gritty yet. Go for it, Sam. You go ahead. Okay. Uh, I th- it wasn't what I expected. Um, I thought it was going to be. I'm kind of glad they went deep into the developer pro- development process of of the games they covered, but I was a little surprised on there were so few. I mean, that's what they said. They only said four games, but... I mean, I wasn't um, expecting Starfield or, you know, Elder Scrolls 6 because they already said that wasn't going to be there. But I was expecting at least some kind of smaller um, Xbox Game Studio titles, like maybe something from Double Fine or something like that. Yeah, I think everything's... It's just got to be in development, I think. Yeah. Um, Yeah, along those lines, I'm a little surprised no, like, third-party stuff. I thought there'd be, like, a Game Pass section. Like, hey, here's what's coming to Game Pass for the next three months. And obviously, we already know that whole layout, but I just thought... Here's a snippet reel of like all the big stuff yeah, coming yeah. to Game Pass real quick. Yeah. I didn't expect any of that. Honestly, they gave me more than I expected. Um mm-hmm. I was I was expecting literally the bare minimum of what they even said. Um mm-hmm. uh, they they said what 40 a little over 40 minutes, four games, uh and that was all I expected. And uh, developers talking about it. And I I liked it a lot. I thought it was a for what that show was, I think that they it's the first one they've ever done, and they needed to set the standard and the pace of what is this show. It is the developers talking about their own games. It isn't some host. It isn't Major Nelson or they go and get Paris Lily to go host something. It's the devs talking about their own game. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. And they did throw in a surprise. It sucks that we kind of knew that <laughs> this game was leaked, I think, months ago. And then the past few weeks or week or so, it was supposed to be at this direct as um somebody broke but uh yeah it was a cool surprise could have used more paris lily though i'll tell you what 
<laughs> yeah. Well, what is he going to do, though? Is he yeah. Gonna yeah. Go to yeah, every studio. A, yeah. <laughs> Drive around for a day, go around all these studios. Yeah. Uh, ultimately, I'm just so happy Xbox is finally doing something like this, right? We've had State of yeah. Play for a couple years now, and then we've had Nintendo Directs for, what, a decade now? Yeah, for, for, like for years we've all been wanting xbox to do one of these and they have one now and i like the format honestly just going getting a deep dive into developers and stuff like that i'm curious how where they take it in the future if we'll end up getting you know more developers on these things and thus making mm-hmm. it much, a much longer show you know because yeah, i'd yeah. like to see this for like third party studios too especially the ones that mm-hmm. xbox like to team up with you know we know like wolong's coming out soon and other stuff coming the game pass soon i would have liked like Hey, let's take a deep dive into these studios as well. But I guess you don't want to run the clock too much. You don't want to make this like a two hour long thing. So, but ultimately, I like the for- format and I think it's a really good first step for Xbox. I do wonder yeah. if we're going to get a companion one to E3 because obviously, you know, in previous years, Nintendo, you know, obviously, what was there, three different conferences. Um, and I know, you know, Microsoft are probably first party wise, they're definitely the most committed. I think probably amongst the third party publishers as well, they are the most committed to E3 as a concept. Cause they've got the whole Microsoft um, arena or, sh- or stage, whatever they call it. But I would, I would be interested to see, especially with the games that are coming out closer to E3 and a lot of <clears throat> a lot of their lineup, if they go, hey, here's a developer um, direct to kind of go in deep into some of the titles. Yeah, they've been doing those extended showcases, or whatever they call it, where it's like a week later they did. I think Paris has hosted one of them, right? I don't mm-hmm. know if he hosted both of them. He hosted like I think the one in 2021. Um, was that for Gamescom? I think it was. Or was that Gamescom? That yeah, I think, it was, I think it was Gamecom 21. They did a massive one, and he he was one of the hosts. And they, because I think I remember them talking to the um, guys who were making uh, Flight Sim. They were going. Yeah, deep I remember the Flight Sim on that. But he did no. He did an extended showcase because he was at a st- at the studio. So he like showed off the custom controller and stuff. Um, uh, but I, I think that they needed to nail this format for the show. And yeah. I think we need to, um, I guess, set expectations properly for where the show will be. This mm-hmm. isn't going to be... I honestly don't think you'll ever get a third-party game. They could surprise me. I don't think that that's what this show is. They might do another type of Direct that will be a little bit more Nintendo Direct. I think this is only going to be first-party games, and it's going to be kind of like... They might do like three of these a year, maybe. Maybe two. Because they're already going to be at E3 or Ke- the Keeleys, uh, and then they're going to be at the game awards so they already have two big shows they're going to be at yeah. and then including gamescom they might be there so they don't need to always do these um but they'll probably do two or three of these a year i would say and they're probably just going to pace them out for every few months this is xbox's lineup for every few months here's a deep dive of you know whatever five games four games yeah, yeah. just keep doing that that's probably the best thing given i think as I said, as, as much as they are the kind of most committed to like the E3 concept, they are probably one of the worst in terms of keeping fans up to date of what's coming out on the Xbox most, because obviously the past couple of years they haven't really had much. Um, but, you know, it's like, for example, the if it wasn't for, you know, me being involved in the in the games industry and re- keeping a regular eye on it, I wouldn't have known that Persona was going to be coming out on Game Pass. So, if you know, if they had a, a Game Pass direct and say, hey, we've got these games coming out on Game Pass, then it keeps your fans up to date. Yeah, I mean, other than E3, that was the only time they really talked about it too much. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. They, they. Well, I think once they start getting a more regular pace of their own first-party games, I think we'll see them kind of get it, get into their own and and feel how they're gonna uh, move Xbox into kind of a new era. Yeah, yeah. A long time ago, I think Phil Spencer talked about hitting that like one game a quarter lineup you know and like if you could do that i think two or three of these a year would work out really well you know what i mean like hey here's the games coming out in the next six months or whatever let's get a deep dive of developers and all that six months later do another one same thing this could be a really good format just for that yeah i think for the first maybe these first like couple years here maybe this year next year maybe 2025 we're probably going to get more than that yeah, and then I'd say it would probably slow back down. Yeah, We're probably yeah. Xbox has just been so bottled up with games, and everyone's working on something. Mm-hmm. Eventually, everything's just going to come out, and you're just going to get probably one every two months, maybe, maybe even once a month. You'll probably mm-hmm. get a game, and then they're probably going to slow back down to to yeah. a more regular pace. Yeah. Now we know we're getting a Starfield show sometime later this year. I wonder if 
that'll be the same format but just focused on starfield like will we get like a 40 minute just starfield one of these you know that'd be really cool i think so yeah, yeah. that'd be fun they'll probably call it the same thing too keep the same format yeah. um i yeah. think yeah. i think i was hearing rumors that it might be next month in life in february yeah yeah, I think yeah, that's what's really just been um, floating around. Yeah, uh, that's a good good time, and I think they could even just be like, "Hey, it's February, and then it's coming out in April or something like that." Like, could be quick. Oh, that's the dream right there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into it then. First thing they showed off is Minecraft Legends, and then got a release date April eighteenth. Come to uh, Nintendo Switch, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Series X, PC, all the good stuff. Uh, Daniel, I know you're a big Minecraft fan. How you feeling? I like the, the main game. Dungeons yeah. is fun. I wasn't like crazy about dungeons, but I thought it was fun. Um, this it looks re- it looks cool. I don't really know a lot about what you were doing too much because they were showing a lot of the PvP. Um, I would prefer just to kind of see a single player uh, gameplay, but uh, it looks really cool. I love <laughs> you could pretty much do anything with um, uh, Minecraft as a as an IP. Um, the one thing that I thought was pretty cool was in these different matches, um, I guess they're 4v4 uh, matches, the maps will always be randomly generated. And that sounds awesome. That, it, it will always change no matter what you do. Uh, I think that's a pretty big benefit having Minecraft as the IP because it is it is just a procedurally generated game already. Yeah, so yeah. just put that into multiplayer sounds pretty pretty cool to me. Sam, you Minecraft guy at all? Mm, really? I mean, the thing is, I've never been massively sold on these spin-offs of Minecraft um, because I, I'm not sure it's the type of IP that really suits, you know, expanding into, especially, you know, given the types of titles they have gone for, like, you know, roguelike-esque dungeon crawlers and now a pseudo action strategy title. Um I mean, there's some interesting elements to it, like some of the different strategies they talked about, some of the um, different ways to play certainly are intriguing, but I'm just not entirely sold on taking Minecraft, which is such a specific thing. And I'm also not entirely sure it's going to get, you know, looking from a sales perspective from Microsoft's point of view, perhaps they don't really care about this, but it's not going to get the sales that um, they were, would potentially expect a Minecraft title to have because again of the nature of the the genres of title i think yeah i wonder yeah, how well the last one did what's it called the dungeons uh, dungeons. Uh, dungeons yeah i wonder how well that one did exactly and the, i mean it must have done at least somewhat well for them to make another spin-off game right yeah, that game is everywhere yeah so i'm sure it did pretty well uh even just off the minecraft name um i was i had something i was going to say and i forgot who knows go on uh yeah i'm not necessarily a minecraft guy nor am i uh you know necessarily into whatever the concept of this game was it, it looks okay you know something I'll, it, it's on game pass right so I'll, I'll download it check it out that's, why not yeah play a match that's what game. i was gonna say yeah there's a uh, lot of these the, for the, just like yeah i'll download it why not to, to what sam was saying about like the sales like i don't think that they're even looking at it like that anymore it's just how many people is is, is is minecraft um legends uh how many people is going to bring to game pass sure that's just what they're i'm sure at. they care about sales though on the other consoles and a little PC, bit right and... yeah a little bit but it's going to be on pc game pass like so it's just like they i think they care more about that cool uh next game then forza motorsport was also shown off no release date yet for this one but they showed off you know some of the the nice looking cars those 4k textures all that good stuff daniel how are you feeling yes. on this now? It looks great. I guess game just looks gorgeous. Um, I still think that they said with it said before the end of January, they're still saying the first six months, so they just don't have a date. And I think today they're doing another uh, event just for Forza. Like I think that Turn Ten's doing something. Um, I don't know if it's when it's airing or anything like that. So hey, by the time you listen to this, they might already have even had a, a date. I don't know, but. Um, like this is going to be a pretty big title for them. Uh, Turn ten, they I forget when seven came out, or was it eight? Seven, I think. Uh, seven. That was twenty. I can't I count 2018. that. Twenty eighteen. So it's been Turn ten's been making this game for a while. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's it's going to be pretty big for them. So it looks great. I'm a massive, massive Forza fan. Um, I, I fell off 
a kind of Forza 5 because I didn't have an Xbox One at that point. Um, Forza 6 I enjoyed. And then Forza 7, the, th the thing for me is that the slow imp implementation of cards and, you know, because already the, it was one of Microsoft's early titles to be played with Microsoft and Jackson. The fact that you could just go and, hey, you know, I'm going to buy this car for however much it ended up being. Um, I mean, they've got two different ways of purchasing the cards for Christ's sake. But it's always kind of been a big ugh, uh, bit of the Forza franchise. And Forza 7 was kind of when they turned it up. So I'm worried about how far they're going to go with Forza 8. Um, the other thing is that some of the features they're talking about, so um, dynamic weather and um, night and day cycles, that's something that I've wanted in the Forza franchise for God knows how long. Um, you know, to be able to, you know, not officially licensed, but be able to do something like a Le Mans 24 hour race. You know, they, they've got everything in the game for a long time and just not have the dynamic weather and night and day cycles. Um, stuff like uh, tyre compounds and t being able to ch uh, change tyres mid race is another really, really crucial thing because Forza has always branded itself as one of, on console at least, the most realistic. Or a, a, to the more realistic end of um, simulation racing games, um, but because it's been missing stuff like tire compounds and night and day cycles and that kind of thing, it's not really been it. But you know, we've well, we've had stuff like Project Cars and even Gran Turismo has been more to the end of you know letting you actually delve into that more uh, sim racer aspect than Forza ever has. But as you say, you know, Forza is Microsoft's big graphical um showpiece you know it was the game they was always showing off with the xbox one originally launched with forza 5 to show kind of the power that the xbox one could um spit out so i know that it'll look incredible i'm slightly I'm, i'll say that i'm a jaded forza fan so i'm more skeptical than um than others maybe that's awesome you're still into forza are you more into the sim racers then or do you also fuck with the uh forza horizon stuff like that I think they they serve different purposes um forza forza motorsport is great if you you know if you just want to take some of the most powerful cars um in racing history and just take them around you know, some of the most iconic circuits whereas horizon is very much you know it's horizon is a callback to, you know the old um need for speed i think it was underground um titles where you know just Take, again taking some of the most powerful production cars ever made and just bombing them down long motorways and, um you know i think some of the skill challenges and so showcase events have been really really fun but they're so they serve such different purposes that it's it's nice that we're getting a proper sim title after having i think there's been two horizon games come out in the time since we had uh the last forza motorsport game really i didn't even realize i that. think so i think so it's somewhere around there yeah mm. No, the way I like to look at it too is like one's a racing game, like motorsport, and then one's like a driving game. Yeah, it's like yeah. an open world, just driving game. Like you are racing, but it's it's a different experience. There's an open world, and you're kind of driving around. One's pure racing. Yeah, that's kind of yeah. how I like to look. That's at a great it. way to put it. Now I know Daniel touched on it a little bit earlier, but with the release date, do we think there's any chance they kick this to fall? Because Forza are traditionally fall games, right? Yeah, it's. It's interesting. I, I, I didn't know um, what uh, Dan was saying there in terms of they, they were saying it before kind of first half of the year. I've I've not heard that. I was I was anticipating uh, like saying that it would be a kind of a September October kind of release. Um, I mean, if they feel it's ready to to go now, I'd say go for it because I think you know we're at the point where then we need to have one of Microsoft's marquee names on the Series X. Because let's be honest, Halo Infinite kind of stumbled out of the gates. Um, and, you know, we need one of Microsoft's big representative franchises on the Series X to really show what it can do. And, you know, with the fact that um, Gran Turismo has already been out for what's coming on, coming up on a year, um, you know, it's kind of, you know, Microsoft's, okay, we've seen what Gran Turismo can do, this is what Forza can do. And that's always been really what the Forza franchise has been, is to way to try and one up Sony. Yeah, I always look at what um, Xbox said at their E3 conference or their Summer Games Fest conference. Um, everything will be within the next 12 months, and that was June to June, and yeah. Forza was there. So, And they also reiterated it you know, yesterday that it will be June so or before June. 
Um, so I, I still think it'll be there. Um, I think they're going to have way more in the fall than itself. So I don't think they could really push too much more into the fall. I think the only one that could is maybe Starfield if they really wanted to. Yeah, but yeah, I still yeah. think that that's going to be in the first six months as well. So um, I think me and Connor have talked about uh, Hellblade maybe coming out in the fall and maybe them have one other title, maybe a smaller was- title. I agree with you on Starfield. Starfield is one of those games that it's like a Rockstar game, you know, or Bethesda games in the past where it will dominate its release window. And, yeah. you know, other publishers and manufacturers will see it as a, almost a little bit of commercial suicide to release anything in proximity to Starfield. Definitely. Yeah, I agree. All right, cool. Uh, the next thing they showed then, there was a surprise launch. Hi-Fi Rush got a surprise launch. This is a Tango Gameworks game uh, out now. You can play it. I've been playing it. It's fucking cool. Guys, this, awesome. was, this was an awesome surprise, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. Um, it, uh, it was a love project uh, from the legend Shinji Mikami. This is a game that he's wanted to make, which is insane. Shinji Mikami is, is the GOAT for survival horror, and... Um, to see him wanting to do something different himself and it be a nice little project for him and for it to come out of nowhere like this. Yeah. Not, this is the exact type of thing that I want more of throughout the industry, not just yeah, maybe yeah. a day uh, announcement to release the same day, maybe like in a month, but like I need, we need to like lower the time between announcement and release. I'm really yeah. tired of year wait or multi-year wait just don't say anything and then just announcement then put it out um and that was awesome like this game i only played uh, we could talk about it later but i played like an hour ish maybe a little less yeah um but it's awesome it, it looks great like this is exactly what xbox needs to do yeah i, I thought I, it was i'll was... oh, get it i got no, I I just thought it was so cool. Like I, you know, they showed the trailer of this game, and then they're talking about it, and you're just sitting there thinking, like, oh shit, when can I play this? They're like yeah. today. I'm like, oh fuck yeah, let's go. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, I just what a cool surprise, cool shadow drop, and that's like the most hype thing you can do. Really, is yeah. is just shadow drop and say like, hey, it's out now. You know what I mean? Like that'll get me no matter what, even if the game's gonna end up sucking. Like if it you can show me a cool trailer and then just say out now, I'm downloading that immediately. I would have probably yeah, even yeah. bought it had it not been on Game Pass, you know what I mean? Uh it is thirty bucks. So yeah. for anybody on PC, yeah, it's, really it's a budget title. Yeah. It's one of those titles that I, I I'm absolutely I was kind of a bit astounded. I was like kind of, oh okay, what's what's this title? And then it's you know, started talking about Shinji Mikami given obviously their last game was um goes by tokyo it's like oh, okay this is a really really interesting title now i've only played the first kind of 20 ish minutes um mainly to a reason i'll get in a bit later but it gave me strong um calls back to first seeing at least on the on the dev showcase when we first saw sunset overdrive for the xbox one you know a different kind of game for the system that was kind of filled with a lot of you know sequels and um long-standing franchise and all that kind of stuff hopefully it, it ends up better than sunset overdrive because i think that was wide resound is pretty mild um but it it was a m- wonderful surprise to see it and you're right for, for them to say hey it's out now i was kind of like what <laughs> yeah exactly. which is out right now <laughs> I think, again, it's just really cool for Xbox to have another smaller title from their giant yeah, yeah. Uh, d- uh, developers, you know what I mean? They just did this with Pentiment a couple months back, and now they did it again with Tango Gameworks, and that's really cool. You don't really see that from the other two with Nintendo and Sony. I know PlayStation has, like, Pixel Opus that just makes smaller type games, and Nintendo will put out, like, that little Kirby game they're doing and stuff like that now and then. But for the most part, you don't see that from the big guys, and it's just really cool that Xbox is just like, hey, you want to make a smaller game? Go ahead. We'll, we'll just yeah, put it on yeah, Game Pass, definitely. promote it. It'd be awesome. Yeah, where's, like, a creative team like Insomniac? Like, give, like, 15 people an Insomniac, yeah. and, like, what do you guys yeah, want to make? Yeah. And just let them make it. Like, I, I would love to see more of that. Like, even do it do with any of them. Like, like put 10 people from, I don't know, Bethesda, and, like, because there's so many people at Bethesda or whatever. Let, put, give, give them 10, 20 people. Like, what do you guys want to make? Make something cool. It'd take a year, make something, you know, whatever. Uh, we what need more Double Fine used to do. What Double Fine used to do internally. I know it's the second time I've mentioned Double Fine, but they used to do um, uh, Insomnia Fortnite. 
they still you know, do them. Yeah. I still do so yeah. like well, it used to be very small groups of like four or five developers, right, you know, go and think um come up with a concept for a title, um, put a prototype together and then you know, I think they put them in a, a small little bundle. I mean, I think they put them out on Steam because they were in a humble bundle a couple of years ago. Um, you know, we want more of that from from these especially someone like Xbox who's taken up so much so many quality developers. Um Microsoft don't let yourself become Disney, where they hoovered up all these really talented studios and just let them sit there doing naff all for God knows how long and then fired them all. Yeah, exactly. I think it really helps too, just in between big releases, right? Because who knows yeah. the next time we're gonna get Tango GameWorks' next big game, right? They just released yeah, yeah. Ghostwire Tokyo last year, and uh, same thing with uh, Pentiment and Obsidian, right? Mm. Seems like Avowed and um, Outer Worlds too are a bit of ways away still awesome they can release this game in between that fill up time stuff going to yeah. game pass and it's just it just works out great for both parties also dan it's it's I, I, I there's a um wonderful point you made when you were saying about game passes that i think now microsoft because they used to be i think a lot more cautious before game pass to you know send small teams of their developers and go and make something new now because they've got game Pass, it's like right go and make it was you know then we can go from there and see if people play it and you know because there's still there's games from you know the very early days of the xbox one that people are now starting to discover on game pass that are getting the recognition they deserve as wonderful little titles yeah i know we'll talk about it more when we get to what we've been playing since it sounds like we all played a little bit of it but like i really hope xbox makes this a franchise like i really like the the main (laughs) character chai is so cool chai is awesome yeah Yeah, dude he's awesome like make him like a face of xbox you know what i mean i want to see him on those like slide reels and stuff like that like that'll Mm. be so fun chai and 808 and him his little guitar and his little cat in the side like just let chai be be a, a face right like he could be in like a smash type game where's where's mm. when, when they get when they get bethesda and um or i'm sorry um uh activision blizzard king they're gonna have so many um ips right yeah make we need that like cart racer in smash yeah, like definitely. there's gonna yeah, be so yeah. many let chai i want to be chai with that guitar, I want to smack Crash in the face. You have the <laughs> little the little 808 bot with you the whole time. Yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> That'd be fun. That'd be fun. I think Sam touched on it a little bit earlier too, with like just Xbox's image. For years it's just been Halo, Gears, Forza, you know what I mean? And yeah. that's a very like mature image for them. I think having yeah, games yeah. like this really just separates them a little bit. Mm. Phil has said that. He yeah. has said that. He has mm. wanted more um family friendly. And and yeah. stuff has, like this is that. really gonna help with that yeah but also at the same time it's and it's a, a point i would um you've almost connected onto there connor is the fact that for so long you know these fr- franchises like forza gears halo all that kind of stuff they've been very very western games obviously because microsoft is a western company but you know there's a significant um market i think in the east in the east whether it be korea or japan you know to take really if you want you know i know it's not really a time in the industry we want to go back to but if you know you want to go back to taking it to sony make a statement on their home turf bring out more games like high uh, fire rush with you know some legendary people behind it and you know show sure you know you've got the likes of the final fantasy games for example on on um on playstation but we've got these kind of in- innovative really fun experiences on on xbox definitely it's awesome i could go on about this game all day because i just yeah, thought it looked yeah. so cool you know what i mean yeah <laughs> but you know awesome that tango game works congratulations to them because uh it seems like it's doing very well too yeah yeah it's nice that a talented team like this that has kind of been overlooked for a while has kind of they're getting a little bit of recognition here i like that yeah definitely yeah all right cool uh next game they showed then was a new expansion for the elder scrolls online called necrom coming out in june uh i don't know if you guys are big elder scrolls online guys sam i think sam's sleeping you you seem like you got something to say here (laughs) oh just let it die like (laughs) it's been years right with this game it has been years i just don't get how how the hell is elder scrolls online still going i think they have a lot big player base still i'm sure they do but i i I mean partially it's a kind of like maybe congratulations need to go to the team at Zenimax because given how the game entered the market, going, we're going to charge a full price and also subscription fee in whatever it was, 2013, 14, whenever it was that game launched, to still be around in 2023 is impressive. But I just... <laughs> I, think, I think it's the Elder Scrolls fan in me. It's like, 
when that is the only Elder Scrolls thing we're getting because Elder Scrolls Six is so far away, it's kind of like, can we just let it die so you know, <laughs> so people from Zenimax can go and speed up the development of Elder Scrolls Six? I'm right there with you. I, I mean, I'm a huge Elder Scrolls fan as well, but uh, I, I remember trying this game back on the like Xbox One launch whenever it first came to yeah. consoles. Yeah. I tried it ra- around then. And I was just like, I'm not into this. What I'm, I'm sure it's gotten a lot better over the years, and I'm sure it's fine now. But uh, yeah, back then I was just not into this. But it really has just taken up all of the Elder Scrolls talk for the last decade yeah, yeah. now, and it's just, oh man, I want Elder Scrolls Six so badly. Well, <laughs> don't forget Elder Scrolls Blaze. That's also a oh, yeah, the oh, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. No. you know i'm shocked that one turned out badly like because i'd loved fallout shelter on the, that's like the only mobile game i've ever gotten like super into and uh so i was like i remember before that game released i was like oh that's probably gonna be awesome but then i remember downloading it and it was just like nah this ain't it fam have you played florence no i have not played florence oh dude you should check out florence isn't that on switch you tell me about this one all the time man uh i don't know if it's on switch it yeah. might be but check switch. out see find a way to play florence it's very okay. short i got some very short. mobile games Okay. Uh, we can move on. Daniel, anything to say about other Scrolls Online? Looks great. Um, yeah. Happy for the people that keep doing it. The, the I'm happy for those devs. Like they they put in a lot of work into this game, and it shows. Daniel, where's that rumored Mandalorian game these guys are supposed to be making? Remember that? <laughs> Maybe they still are. <laughs> Who knows? Where is that? You know. Was it the? Is that the? Are you talking about the leaked thing that? Is that still the same uh, footage? That was that... probably fake, but uh, there was like a rumor. The Mandalorian by ZMX Studios. I, I forget exactly okay. where that came from. but uh... It wasn't that footage that we saw? No, that no, that was something saw? else. Yeah, that was a mod okay. and something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I know what you're talking about. Okay, cool. Last game they showed, Redfall. Got a release date, May 2nd. Coming to the Xbox and PC. They showed up. This is probably the game they spent the most amount of time on. I think uh, we got yeah. a lot of new gameplay from this. I know Daniel, you're excited. Sam, how are you feeling about Redfall? I'm kind of middling on Left for Vampires. Um, it's one of those. No, things it's not where... Left for Dead. <laughs> is it? <laughs> it's not is Left for Dead. Though? Is it? No, it's not. Is it? It's not. You it's know, not I don't know. Keep going, Sam. Keep going. I mean, there's certainly some very interesting mechanics in there. Um, but I think potentially, again, you know, I, I joke, but, you know, look at Back for Blood. It's another thing that invokes um, a similar kind of gameplay loop and ethos of, you know, playing with your four mates. If you're not playing with your four mates, it's going to be not as good as it could be. Um, that type of title has never really been my kind of thing, but I mean, it looks pretty. Yeah, I, guess. I think they're. I think Arcane's visual direction is always great. Um, they always have uh, strike, uh, striking art styles. Yeah. Um, Deathloop looks great. Um, I, I mean, do you... just to add on, yeah. is I'm I'm glad you're right with what you're saying about Arcane and their art and their design philosophy. I'm glad they went with you know vampires being just grotesque monsters instead of the normal you know Hollywood vampires see in um, Macro Bloodlines too, if that ever sees the light of day. Yeah, I mean, I like looking at pretty vampires too, but I'm with you. Like, they're they're more monsters mm. um, in this world. They're there. They are monsters. Um, uh, do you like Borderlands, Sam? The f- I enjoyed the second one for about twenty thirty hours, and then it just got to a point where I think it it kind of struck me that I was doing just the same thing for so many missions on the trot i was just you know go here kill this thing you know pick up this item go back to sanctuary and repeat i was just like i'm not i'm like i can't be asked with this yeah i I think that that's more of what we're gonna get we're gonna get builds you're gonna have your each character is gonna have particular Mm -hmm. builds and they'll probably work off of each other and um it's gonna have more of an open world um instead of because Borderlands, like, it is open world, but it is sectioned off. This seems yeah, to yeah. be more open, like a... I think that someone had said, like, Far Cry. Um, so I think it's going to be just a big open world. Um, the, the big difference between why I was joking about Left 4 Dead is... Left 4 Dead is, you're in a menu, you select a mission, you go to the mission, you have little f- steps that you do in between, then you go back to the menu. You're not, like, in an open world, yeah, continuously moving, and have abilities with characters it's not what left for dead is you just get pick up guns and you shoot people um this is going to be a little bit different than that um uh but yeah it looks great um i'm excited for it we got actually got a date which is which is good yeah a second 
yeah i don't i don't know how i feel about this game it's it, it, i just think it's not my cup of tea ultimately you know i'm not the, i'm not the borderlands guy and that's really what it came off as you know they said far cry a couple weeks ago and then i did that 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 perked my ears up where i was like oh okay far cry i love far cry but then i see gameplay of this and i see what they're going for and i'm like no this is borderlands you know what i mean and like i don't mean to disrespect borderlands too much but borderlands to me has always been go online with your friends go shoot some guys get some loot go back to the hub, go do it again. And, the, and yeah, that's, yeah. that just, I, I just remember back in the day that, that really boring me, that cycle. And that's just what this seems like. And like to each their own, you know, it's just not my cup of tea. I, mean, I think this is going to have more of a story. Like, this is going they to be said RPG. that, but where was it? You know, like where were they? they I mean, when they said Far spoil. Cry, I'm picturing, you know, Far Cry, I'm picturing a, a main villain, cool characters, cutscenes, stuff like that. They, they always do that stuff. They're just not showing it. Sure, yeah. maybe, but the, the, I would have liked to have seen that, I guess, you know? Yeah, they're just not really showing a lot. I think you're going to get that. Like, Arcane is going to keep Arcane DNA. Yeah, like, I didn't see one, like, cool character, you know what I mean? Like, have, like, the main vampire villain talking to me or whatever, you know? Like, he's going to suck your blood or whatever, he's Dracula. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. So, uh, but again, this is another one where I will just download it because of Game Pass, right? And I'm, I'm going to play a couple yeah. matches, and maybe I get super into it. Who knows? Not matches. I mean, it's just be the game. Yeah, whatever, you know, jump in there, whatever. I'll, I'll jump on with Daniel and go shoot some shit. Fuck sure. this whole game. You can't just play this game by yourself. Like, yeah. It, it, even Borderlands, like, Borderlands See, a lot like, of games, uh, I always just Borderlands feel like that's fun, promotion dude. talk, though, you know? Because it's never as fun by yourself. Like, I never found, I I've tried Borderlands by myself. I've never found it fun, you know? It's I, not as fun, but it is yeah. very fun. Borderlands yeah, is and fun it's like game. the same thing with, like, The Division and stuff like that. Like, it's like, yeah, you could play it by yourself, but it's not as fun. Yeah. I think yeah. there is a distinction to make because, you know, Division live service kind of, you know, it's designed around being a multiplayer game. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, as much as I'm not super excited for Redfall, I'm hoping it does deal with single player a lot better than Borderlands. Because I always felt Borderlands, like, I always felt if you were going in single player, you were a bit of a disadvantage given, you know, to the later period of the game, just how much health the enemies have got. Yeah, yeah it's all about balancing with that. I will say, just a, a non positive note, that the, the gunplay looks awesome. And then, of course, like the enemy design is really cool and stuff like that. Like, I like the look of everything. That, it looks very fun. Yeah. They, I mean, they've been working on this game for, uh, when, did, when did we say Prey came out? 2017? So, yeah. It's been a while. They've been working on the game for a while. Yeah. All right, cool. That was the oh, developer alongside direct. Deathloop as well. Say that I one more time. I just remember, I, I was going to say, alongside Deathloop, because I just remember Deathloop was an arcane game. Uh, yeah, that was Arcane uh, Leon. Um, yeah, yeah. They, they, this this team, I think. What, what did they do? Dishonored two and then Prey. Um, and I think the, that, yeah, they made that Wolfenstein did. game in between as well. Oh, and that, yeah, that's right. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, good job, Xbox. First of all, the direct down. Can't wait to see the next one. Thinking yeah, about it's, Xbox it's then. Solid. I was yeah. going to say, good job, Xbox there, now bad job, Xbox here. <laughs> well, then, bad, bad job will be more Microsoft. <laughs> yeah, fair point. Uh, this is coming from Jason Schreier over at Bloomberg. Microsoft is laying off 10,000 people, including in its gaming divisions such as Xbox mm -hmm. and Bethesda. Uh, this mass layoff arrives exactly one year after Microsoft announced plans to purchase Activision Blizzard for $69 billion. With a B. <laughs> With a B. Guys, a bit of unfortunate news here. Yeah. It's not just a year after they announced the Activision Blizzard King purchase, but also four months after they announced that, and that 4,000 people, including people working at, um, in, within the games division, were also getting laid off. Yeah, uh, we can even sprinkle in like, uh, I think it's, I think it was 11,000 at Amazon. I think it was, what, 14? I forget how many Google laid off. Mm -hmm. um, we can even sprinkle Riot, in. I think uh, sat 2,000, was it? For, for who? Riot Games, I think it was. Uh, like yeah, let, let, let me tie this one in since it's also here on their news Go list. Uh, League of Legends and Valorant maker Riot Games has also reportedly made layoffs across several departments. So layoffs across the board seems like it's going on yeah. everywhere. We even know in games um, media, right? Washington I was Post, just going to say that. Yeah, yeah GameSpot, yeah. a lot of these places. It's, uh, Giant Bomb. You know, it's, it's bad times with the recession and stuff coming up. It's, uh, you know, not good out there. Yeah, I mean, what's what's happening with these companies? They're they're basically they they're going to they're, they're going to see a slight dip in their profits, and eh, for their bottom line, instead of like you know eating their bottom line, they're going to say, where can we cut costs? Yeah. And it's going yeah. to be it's just going to be workers, um, which really sucks. You know, there's not much you know people can really do about it. Um, 
I, 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 to be a little bit more balanced in the in the discussion, I, I, I do want to say that a lot of these cut jobs are stuff that they try things and they don't work out, and then they cut that entire division. Like, uh, I think that I think for Microsoft, a lot of those people that are getting cut are um, people from Hololens, um, which it's like no one even thinks about Hololens. It's like okay. Like tech does it all the time. They're building things up. They try a new thing and yeah. it doesn't work. It works. Who knows? And then if it doesn't work, they cut those jobs. That's just tech is always fl- ebbing and flowing. Yeah. Yeah. Does this necessarily uh, associate with the recession? I don't know. I mean, we'll see it more in regular jobs, I think, first than tech because tech just moves in a, in a different way. Um, it's just we're seeing a lot of it now. I think maybe it's just kind of post uh, pandemic. Uh, rise in 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 jobs that we're kind of going back down now. Yeah, yeah, I I, I appreciate your your balance, um, Dan. But I will say this is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. I'm sorry, Microsoft. You have enough cash. Amazon. You've got enough cash. Google, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You've got enough cash. You absolute greedy bastards. I'm sick and tired of it. I mean, and the thing is, you're right. You know. Uh, it's been reported that a significant, um, or that some of these, I won't say significant, that some of these have been from Holland. Um, it was also reported by Ashley, who was it? Ashley Stewart from Business Insider, that Microsoft were claiming that some of these were due down to poor performance. Um, however, it was also reported by, I think, Lords of Gaming and corroborated by Jason Schreier that a significant number of layoffs across uh, 343 were towards the single player side of the studio. Mm-hmm. Um, also, uh, cuts made to the coalition, who of course gears of war, um, and uh, what was the? So I'm just checking my uh, script from this. But there was something else. Uh, from... Yeah, the, the interesting thing about three four three is I think it. also they are significantly larger than I think people even think that they are. I yeah, think they're like yeah. four hundred people. Like I think three four three is just massive. Like they're one of the largest like first party studios out there. So. Like to even cut them down, even by a chunk, is still larger than a lot, you know. Um, yeah, it sucks that we're losing a lot of these jobs, and of course they can afford it. Um, does oh, that? That was, that was just to clear it up. Just the, the, the other yeah. part I was going to say was the engineering division was um, another part. Of, uh, Microsoft was a, was reportedly making a, another um, amount of uh, cuts from this ten thousand, which is reportedly about four point five percent of the company's entire staff. Yeah. Speaking on 343, um, that one guy, what's his name? He came in towards the end of Halo Infinite. Yeah, Joseph Stanton. Yeah, Yeah, he came in uh, towards the tail end of uh, Halo Infinite development to get that game back on track. Mm -hmm. And now he's going back to regular Xbox to work on... He's going back to publishing. publishing. Going back to publishing. Okay, which is an interesting Mm -hmm. move to me. I kind of thought he would lead uh, rise up and become like almost the studio head around there but yeah, uh yeah i don't think he really like 343 is going either, to be honest nah. yeah because like, th- this most... was him actually leaving himself it yeah, just happens yeah. to be tied together which mm-hmm. is kind of a weird way to do that maybe they oh was it he decided bit. to do that okay yeah, no no, no yeah. he left on his own volition he did not gotcha. okay, get okay. laid off or anything he was like mm-hmm. i'm gonna go do this myself yeah. um and i don't really think that joseph wanted to do that i think he said that he kind of made that clear even when he came in he kind of came in to help them yeah, to yeah. push it over the line i don't really think he wanted to even take the the role that he did even after that um so i, I don't really like it's it sucks because i would like to as a halo fan love to have seen state and stay and continue to do that um but i think that 343 i've said this the entire time connor we've been doing the show and talking about halo infinite they need to move on from halo infinite uh period like i think multiplayer wise and single player i don't want the halo infinite dlc that's not what i want for halo i don't want single player dlc in halo it's halo make a single player and then move uh move to the multiplayer and have all your forge and all that but uh, you don't you don't need that for for a campaign and yeah you're right with getting the campaign layoffs that really is interesting that shows me that they are probably just moving on um they're going to keep updating this game and make halo uh halo 7 and i think that's what they should do i mean because of their push i think they're pushing the esports side of um halo influence multiplayer to kind of get that um, pumping, but just to touch on Joseph Satan, one more, um, one last thing is that I thought I found it very interesting that um, while the reports came out from Mishraya that he was going to go back to Xbox Games Publishing, he then announced on Twitter last Friday that he was now 100% focused on helping those who have been sacked get new jobs, um, which you know potentially as much be the optics makes you know shows how much he cares about the people that have been sacked from 343. Um, 
he's always been great. Stain, yeah, Stain's yeah. awesome. Yeah. It's interesting you mentioned the kind of that they need to move on, on from Halo Infinite because I agree, you know, I to me the entire um 343, I was going to say Bungie, but the entire 343 tenure over Halo has been an absolute disaster. I completely um, disagree. I Okay, I, I hated Halo 4. I hated Halo 5. And I thought Halo Infinite was probably the best thing they did. It was kind of very middling. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think it's middling. I think Halo Infinite's... I, I think the entire story around Halo Infinite is... It kind of drives me crazy because it's like... I think people expect way too much from things a lot of the time. And I think it kind of spoils... I think Halo Infinite's a great game. I think they could have had more content in the game. But I don't think that makes the game worse. Um, in like... People want so much content so regularly and so fast. Like it's just not it's just not healthy <laughs> for for consumers. Um, but it's yeah, I didn't t- mean to interrupt. It's right. It's interesting you touched though on the on the regular content and all that kind of thing because I think Halo Infinite is now has now become Microsoft's live service. They will go, you know, here's that's what they wanted. Know, yeah, f- four more maps or whatever to to the multiplayer, and they'll just keep churning that out for a couple of years which would explain why a significant number of the um, single-player staff have been cut because, you know, they're going, okay, you know, single-player is done. We can now move on to doing majority multiplayer. Yeah. If, can you correct me? What is the, the new head's name? What is his name again? Peter oh, something? Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, uh, hang on, let me find it. Um, but, but this Peter is the man Master that- Chief. No, I don't Peter know. Master Chief, <laughs> Peter Chief, um, <laughs> he he's the one to help kind of usher them past um, the because uh, I know that they only helped do Master Chief Collection, but then they end up fixing it. I think I forget who else else was working on Chief Collection, but um, it depends uh, on the thing because you've got because they're um, so the the general manager is um, I believe still Bonnie Ross, and uh, no 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 Bonnie Bonnie stepped Hintz, down. Um, Pierre Hints. Pierre hints, that's what it is. Um, no, Bonnie stepped down. Bonnie is no longer three four three. Ah, I must have missed that. Um, yeah, Pierre hints. There we go. Pierre hints. Uh, he helped usher them through um, Master Chief Collection. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I have faith in him in in building rebuilding the studio. I just think that they just need, they're going to be in a complete rebuilding phase, even yeah. in the campaign. Um, there's just a lot of doom and gloom. I think with a lot of people, I don't I don't know. Yeah, I'm just very curious to see where 343 ends up going with this. Are we, you know, I, I, we know they'll stick with Halo. They put out that whole tweet uh, last week sometime that they'll be making the future Halo games and stuff like yeah. that. But with them laying off so many people from the campaign side, it's like, okay, are we gearing up for Halo 7 then? Because what are we doing firing these people? Yeah, yeah. Uh, just that new combat. roles, maybe. And then if they are in a rebuilding phase, okay, are we are we looking at like another seven year gap here between Halo Infinite and Halo Seven? You know what I mean? Because that was a long mm. time between Five and Infinite. Yeah, yeah. So I think I think Halo's timeline is going to be uh, if I were to make a you know a, uh, what's his name Nostradamus like future looking. <laughs> um, I'm going to say for the next year it's going to just be three for three doing updates uh maybe just maybe you do some minor maps and things like that um then you're going to get the um certain affinity multiplayer thing that was halo mm-hmm. uh probably either by the end of the year or early next year um and that would be 2024 and then i would say they're going to announce they're going to move all halo's future production into unreal engine and then um Halo will move to Unreal 5, and then maybe by 2026, you'll get another Halo. It's a nice game plan. Maybe 2027. So I don't think it'd be that long. Four years? Five years? Okay. Uh, yeah, we will see. I mean, that'd be, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I think... I don't know. In the means, I, I think Halo 7 is a ways away. I think they're going to really hunker down and try to get a good roadmap for Halo Infinite going. I think that's probably the main thing here that they want to do, because it does have great gameplay just uh lack of content really does i mean i to what daniel was saying earlier i don't think people it wouldn't be complaining we just want we all want halo 3 right we all want those days back when we were getting consistent yeah, updates yeah, and stuff like that kind of the, the, the very peak of bungie halo yeah. exactly where we were getting tons of content that was a live service game before it was even a thing if you think about it you know what i mean with all the dlc maps and stuff we were getting over there and i know forge is heading it in the right direction and stuff like that adding more content just from uh the community being able to make it but uh yeah, I don't. They just need a good roadmap, and they need to hit their targets, right? And yeah. that'll that'll shut people up and make people happy in the meantime. 
All right, cool. Next up, then. Uh, GoldenEye 007 is coming to Xbox and Switch on January 27th. The Xbox version will include 4K resolution, smoother frame rates, and even split-screen local multiplayer. Online multiplayer modes will be exclusive to the Nintendo Switch version of the game. Yeah, it's because of the weird Switch, it, how, how it works with their thing. It's like you're basically playing a couch co-op even though it's online, so that's why they can get around it. It's very weird. Switch is weird. Um, but yeah, this is really cool. I've been waiting for it. I want to just check it out and hop in and shoot some stuff. I also want to mention this will also be available in uh, Rare Replay if you own that, so you can get it oh, as well. Oh, yeah. look at That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that is cool. That is really cool. That's brilliant. I, I'm, so I'm, 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 ve- I'm very young. I was I'm 23, so I've, I completely missed Golden Eye Double. Um, I'm looking forward to kind of jumping. I um, re-downloaded Rare Replay fairly recently to kind of um, try some, you know, some not genre defining, but some pivotal games in moving the, the industry forward. So, you know, it's good to see that, especially because how long people have been asking for um, Golden Eye Double to come. Um, and the only, I think the closest thing we've got was that a Nintendo Wii. Uh, um, I'm not going to say the name of the remake. It's just it's like it's, it was just Golden Eye 007. The yeah. name stamped on a fairly um, poor uh, Wii FPS. But you know, to see them, you know, bring it back is pretty cool. And I, the fact that it's coming to Rare Replay is obviously brilliant. Yeah, I didn't know that. That's really cool. Yeah, it was cool. Cool little thing they're doing there. Yeah, the, the James Bond I played way more is um, 007 Nightfire on the GameCube, my cousin's oh. GameCube. Come over at his house. Very similar type of game. Mm. Very weird, like, movement and, and controls. But, like, yeah. man, we played so much of that game. The game was <laughs> cool. Next up, then. The entire PSVR 2 launch lineup has been announced, uh, including games like Horizon Call of the Mountain, Creed Rise to Glory, and both Moss, Moss games. Be uh, available. And I give a little shout there. out. Yeah, I know we'll we'll talk about what we think about this, but the whole list. But I want to shout out uh, before your eyes. Go go play before your eyes. Play it on PSVR. Oh, play is that on there? Yep, my game of the year of twenty twenty one. To play on VR. Was it like the camera watching you blink? That's cool. Yeah, That's it's. Cool. I know it's it's cool. It's cool. Yeah, I never even thought of that. That's a cool idea. Uh, I know me and Daniel have been kind of underwhelmed with the entire PSVR two. Uh, all the games they're offering there it's just not there's not much fun. other than horizon that's the only thing i really want to play out of this yeah. list and and i'd probably like if i was buying one i'd check out that um what's it called the until dawn guys super massives game um, switchback whatever it's yeah, called what, what is the name of that game i think it's is the that, dark pictures switchback I I, i'd check game. out that one too is all i'm saying but other than that that's kind of the whole reason why i'm not even buying a psvr2 right now it's uh it you know, switchback yeah switchback it's, it's, didn't that get announced recently that it's getting that it's, it won't be launched yeah that got with, that uh, got delayed to like mid-march somewhere so yeah. that's so all of these aren't at the launch day these are like throughout the they call it window it's like yeah I think, yeah i think they're doing it through march yeah so it's like that's a weird way to put it, but I guess they're just trying to say, hey, we got we got some games within a month. I don't know. At least they didn't yeah. stretch it out fucking a year again like they did with the PS5. Yeah. <laughs> they are like, launch window. <laughs> yeah, that's so... Uh, the window's like, like a 18 week. months later. <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there but, are really cool games in here. Like, you're going to get some sort of Gran Turismo mode, right? Like, that's pretty cool. Um, that's uh, actually Pistol the full Whip. game in PSVR, which is really cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah uh pistol whip is really cool game yeah so, uh i want to shout out thumper i love that game and uh, that, cool. that's on there for vr that uh, that's really fun i think i heard tetris effect is coming there too yep it's uh connected yep yeah uh, that, that, this year. that'll be very cool um yeah last clock clock winder i want to shout that out um oh, yeah. i was listening to the mid maxes like game of the year stuff uh and it ended up going in their top 20 um and it's supposed to be a really cool vr game yeah, there's um, some really cool stuff on there. It's just it's just still not enough. I needed one more big thing. If they would have got Half-Life Alex down and had it in this launch window, I would have been day this one. Point, I would have bought this, you know? Valve just doesn't care. Like they, No, just, I'm sure I, they I don't. Why just, would they? They yeah. have all the money in the world. Like, yeah. They don't need to waste their time and do this. Uh, just for me, I think Sony should have gone and locked that one down. Yeah, this list I'm looking at, it's just... Like, there are some cool games here, but it's just disappointing. Like, yeah, all these yeah. games, for the most part, you'd already play on a different s- headset. It's like, do you really want to spend more than the PS5? And if you don't have a PS5, so then you're going to have to get that too. So you're going to spend, what is that? $1,050 plus buying the games, yeah. you know, just to experience games you could play on your Quest already or something. And like, that, that, that is my big problem. It's, it was my big problem when the original PS5 
came out is that Sony, you're meant to be bringing out the budget version of VR so pe- more people can experience it. So people, you know, might go, oh, maybe, you know, the um, Quest 2 or, you know, the Vive, whatever um, one they've, they've got out now. But some of these prices are absolutely extraordinary. Um, you know, the headset alone, 600, um, uh, which one, which number is it? Uh, I think five, it's 550. Yeah, yeah, 550. I was looking at the euro amount on my, on my document. 550 euros, 530 pound here. Then the actual, um, like stuff like the controllers, um, oh no, the charging station, sorry, is an extra 50 bucks. That's pretty reasonable, but. But I mean, like, you know, that's $600. Yeah, it's additive, for, yeah. That's $200 on top of what it will cost you to get the PlayStation, uh, the PlayStation 5. Yeah, it's it's, it's 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 a lot of money. It's ridiculous. I don't I will, understand why Sony. Don't I will play. defend PlayStation a little bit. Like the tech is there. It's a very yeah. high quality mm. tech. Like there's mm. a lot going on. There's a lot of like they have really high quality screens. I think there's yeah. two yeah. screens in there. Like to 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 their credit, they they're they are putting a lot behind this. This it's just it's so expensive. Like yeah. it's yeah. already a niche product. Like you, you really need to get get it in the door. And if yeah. you're not. Yeah. If you're not doing that, like, are you really just only going for a couple million people to do this and that's it? Like, like that means most of those games aren't even going to sell a million copies. Yeah, exactly. You know? yeah. Like, I worry about stuff. the support too, right? Like, because there hasn't been announcements from their big first party studios of VR games that they're making, you know? Like, if yeah, they came out and said, hey, the Astro VR Bot- com- um, implementation with stuff like um, Gran Turismo 7 and, that, and that's it, you're not going to get a dedicated Gran Turismo game. Right, and I guess I don't necessarily need that, but like I would have loved if like the Astrobot guys came out and said, "Hey, we're making Where's a new Astro? Astrobot yeah. game. Yeah. It's on VR." But uh, you know, I would also like it to just be a regular game too, like but like have it have a uh, VR compatible as well. Like I think that'd yeah, be a yeah. good direction to go with that. That way, you please both audiences. But again, they just haven't announced anything like that. So you know, I worry about their support in the future. Two years from now, are we going to be wondering, "Hey, where are the VR games?" Because there hasn't been any since launch. You know. I yeah. hope not. All right, cool. Well, PSVR two launching next month. Uh, I think we're exactly a month away from it. So, Coming pretty close. We should probably get a lot of previews soon. I would, I would think. Yeah, definitely. Next up, then a leaked image of Rocksteady Suicide Squad kills the Justice League shows us some of the game's UI, where you can see battle pass options, different types of currency, and matchmaking matchmaking options. This suggests the game is very much a live service multiplayer game. Uh, more so than a traditional Rocksteady single-player game that I know a lot of people, including myself, were hoping for. The sweet irony that everyone thought that Gotham Knights was going to be a live service, and it turns out to be Suicide Squad Kill, the Justice League, it's the live service. Yeah, the problem with all of this is, is it's just a screenshot, and we don't know when the screenshot was taken. You know, this could have been a year ago, two years ago. We don't know. Like, we... That would worry me even more if they got rid of those options then like commit to one thing because if it yeah, yeah if they were like hey i'm, I'm just cha- saying we're though. changing course just- now because like what if they I mean, we'll get into avengers in a second if they saw avengers and they were like oh that didn't work out let's switch course make it a single player game mm-hmm. but we already have the base game being a live service game that yeah, would worry yeah. me a lot more than than, yeah. than it mm-hmm. just straight up being a live service game what, what i will say oh go ahead no 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 it's fine. uh what i will say about this whole thing too it's like this is just a menu too. Like I did, I, I didn't really get live service from that menu. Um, I think when like, it says battle pass and matchmaking, then that's. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I still don't get live service. Really? I get okay. more. Yeah, I get just a co op game because they're wanting online play. That what that tells me with the with the with the matchmaking in particular is they really want you to have four people not necessarily be you know a live service they want you to play Mm. they build encounters maybe more around four people and having Mm. all of the suicide squad members fighting um the battle pass if it's anything like avengers it's it is it's not a live service battle pass it's just cosmetic it's just a way to unlock things it which i just don't like the idea then don't call it a battle pass like just make that (laughs) challenges or something i don't know um Mm. and and the, the currency thing i found interesting because it looks like there are symbols for all of them. And all those symbols, like I kind of zoomed in on it. All those symbols just look like the different characters. So it seems like there might be just a currency or like skill points that you're just getting for individuals. Not that there are six currencies, you know, that you have to use to upgrade. 
Does that make any sense? Sure. It does. Okay. But I but I would then tag on the question of why separate XP bars. I know. For, I know. Why separate XP bars when you know just have a single one that you can use across all the characters and they. And I just. I, I'm I'm with I'm with Connor absolutely because I think what what you said there, Connor, was absolutely spot on. If they changed their mind and gone, hmm, actually, it's not a live source so or hasn't got a battle pass or you know all the all these stuff, then that's more concerning. Because we've already seen with Skull and Bones that that has been delayed five times and, and has been rebuilt three years ago to make it a live service. So then to revert that and go, right, um, we've gone from a live service to now just a standard Rocksteady game, the foundations of that are going to be so fragile. What I will say to, I guess, alleviate some concerns a little bit here. Uh, this is rock steady. Look at those cutscenes. Those are high quality cutscenes. Like that's not Gotham Knights cutscenes. Like those cutscenes look great. That story is mm. going to be fun, and these characters, I'm sure, are going to be written fun. Like Boomerang is hilarious in all those trailers. Uh, I'm a huge Harley Quinn fan. This is in the Arkham universe. This isn't a side game. Like this is a direct sequel to Arkham Knight. Uh, that Batman is the Batman we played for three games. Um, like. This is Rocksteady. Yeah, maybe they might stumble a bit, but they have a level of quality that I have faith in. Um, until I really see the game and I'm like, whoa, uh, I'm going to have faith in them. My question to that is, is Rocksteady still Rocksteady? Because it's been eight years yes. at this point. It's been a very and long And the two time. heads have left. Two heads have left. This, yeah. this game has been in development for so long that I guess, they, what are they doing? You know, but um, what is Rocksteady in the future, I think, is more of the question, I would say, than maybe right now um, what i would say is also dan you're right this is rocksteady this is the company that every single batman arkham game they released it was buggy and broken um sure. so that that would be another At least big on pc concern. yeah i mean even, even the ps4 arkham knight um I, I didn't get an xbox one but i did hear about one copies that was also absolutely bricked um so i never I mean, really had too many problems with arkham knight i know their their piece their their like steam release was botched but um i didn't really have too many issues with their games but um i believe you again with this I game i just want to see i know we've talked about this a couple times now but i just want to see give me give me 10 minutes of gameplay here's what you're doing yeah, here's a yeah. mission i yeah. want to see what it is like is the, and, and it kind of worries me a little bit that we haven't seen that at this point you know yeah. it's uh, yeah. i know they still got six months here five six months I just want to see it. Like, show me it. Because if this is a live service game, I'm probably out, you know? Yeah. Sure. yeah. I think a lot of the issues with that is, like, not a Rocksteady issue. I think, if I were just to make a guess, I think a lot of that would be WB. There's just all... WB's in a... It's a mess everywhere. It's a mess, not only in their games division, like, their entire other mm -hmm. division with HBO and all their studios like they are just in a shuffling mess with the discovery merger yeah. like there's just a lot going on at wb so I, like we haven't gotten a dc fandom in a while right like that's where you would probably do something like that like have that games fandom again but they just haven't done that so you're probably it's it's i would say it's probably a wb problem more than yeah. rocksteady yeah. problem mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean rocksteady can't just come out with their own you know marketing themselves yeah. Yeah. but that's just not their their role. They like they're not publishing the game. WB is. You're, you're spot on. It is it is a WB issue, and WB are one of the worst publishers in the industry um, with their advertising, um, their, their foibles of advertising. And let's not forget um, Batman Arkham Origins when they've almost broken and was like, oh no, we're not going to fix that on DLC. Is that um, it's? I'm more skeptical about this than. I probably have been about any Rocksteady game. And that's just, as, as you said, is that, you know, which, which Rocksteady is this? Yeah. All right. Well, we'll find out soon. I believe the release date okay. May 26th. So what are we? Exactly yeah, towards the end of May. Out? Yeah. All right. Uh, speaking of live service superhero games, Marvel's Avengers is coming to an end. Crystal's, Crystal Dynamics will update the game for the final time on March 31st and then end full support on September 30th of this year. Matt Sims isn't here. Oh, thank God he isn't. He'd be sitting here crying. He'd be crying. Oh, man, I couldn't deal with uh, that. It'd be like a therapy I session. 
I can't explain how happy I am that in the same week Stadia and Marvel's Avengers died. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Well, technically they're still alive. I think it's in, it's September, right? So they're still going for a little bit. To the I mean, deepest pit of hell Marvel you Avengers go. Died... <laughs> technically, Marvel Avengers died three weeks after it came out, but... <laughs> yeah. It sold decently well for that first few months. Um, yeah, the thing that... Yeah, it's, 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 it's this game... It was eventually going to die no matter what because yeah, of the, yeah. the sale of Crystal. Like... Yeah crystal a little bit here so it's like the game was going to die like they don't they don't even own crystal anymore so um yeah it's it had a big a longer i should say big a longer life than anyone even thought and mm. you know good yeah. good for them to keep you know making content even if it was slow they made content for the people that were still playing and there were people that were still playing even if it was a little bit you know I wonder if Embrace Group tried at all to talk to Disney and be like, hey, can we just keep this game going for a while, get a sequel going or something like that? Because I'm sure they loved this, the, the idea of this IP, at least when they bought the studio. I don't know. Yeah. Embrace has seemed like the kind of, um, especially with some of their decisions, the back end of last year, they seem like the kind of organization that is very business focused. Like, you know, is Marvel's Avengers making money? No, okay. You know, it's, we're all, it's already going to come to an end at some point. Kill it now. Um, you know, with, uh, was it Square Enix Montreal with that studio? Oh, you know, they're, they're working on, they're working on a few things and, you know, they've not had a big hit in a while, kill them off, sack them all. Yeah, well, they changed their name and it was yeah. like a month later, they were like, yeah. you're, we're <laughs> okay, shutting yeah. you down yeah. and you're going to go move to, I, they moved to a different studio or something like they kind of like shuffle them into. Yeah, I can't, I can't remember who they, who they were sharing them between. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's the team that is working with, um, Playground to work on the Fable oh that's yeah that's i am i can't remember i'm curious here because we know crystal dynamics is moving on to the tomb raider game but they're also working on the yeah. perfect dark game and um mm -hmm. one of the developers or someone came out a little, little bit ago and said that the tomb raider game will come out before perfect dark i'm wondering what the lineup is and what they're working on here exactly because i i thought that tomb raider game was far out so now i'm wondering how far out is perfect dark if that's even further Um. I think that Perfect Dark probably isn't as far as I think people would think. I mean, we'd probably get it in another, I don't know, maybe next year, maybe 2024. Maybe but then like how close is that? 2024. Let me try I, to I find that, that article. I don't know who that dev is. I don't know if I trust I, whoever that dev yeah. is. <laughs> you I just if, don't trust I, him. I wonder if, if this is the case. I wonder if the the role that um, Square Enix is having in the Perfect Dark, not Square Enix, sorry. Um, Crystal Dynamics. is having in the Perfect Dark game is even less than than the collaboration that was announced um, by Microsoft. It's a case of they're just acting as a support studio. I think you know with, is, yeah. with you know with the animations, for example, because Crystal Dynamics are known for their brilliant um, motion cap and all that kind of stuff. That's the role they're fulfilling, and then everything else is being done by I can't remember the, the initiative other, um, team is the initiative. The initiative yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that's what it is. I think they're support for sure. I don't think they're taking full development. Um, I actually think it's the other way around. I think, I think sure. Perfect Dark is going to feel more like a Tomb Raider game than it will anything new. I think, I, I think we're going for a third person angle there. I think that's going to be very much a Tomb mm -hmm. Raider game. Because uh, I think we've heard so many rumors about the initiative, them being such a small studio now, uh, that I think they're the support role and Crystal Dynamics is really taking up Perfect Dark. I mean, David Gallagher, he's from um he's from crystal like he was a head at crystal so like he had that that's the dna that the initiative kind of has is a crystal dynamics dna so yeah it'll probably feel like a, a tomb raider game which is awesome i love that trilogy so what you mean kind of about it being more of a tomb raider game because you know with amazon's games being involved in in the tomb raider i know they're already publishing but they have the influence <laughs> i mean i won't be convinced until it actually releases that it's not going to be some kind of online in the amazon games is past that's a good point yeah yeah, uh, very interesting stuff going on over there. But uh, yeah, uh, rest in peace, Marvel's Avengers. We uh, we hardly rip, knew you. Rip to a real one, you know. A real Thank one. God, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Burn in hell, you bastard! All right, our last news story of the week. Then WWE 2K23 will release on PC and consoles on March 17th, 2023. They also went with an interesting choice for this year's cover by deciding not to have anyone on the cover and just having a be a blank box. 
<laughs> Why did you put very, that joke in there? Very odd to me. It was just blank, you know? It's just so fucking weird, guys. Like, it's just WWE 2K23, the logo, and then just blank image. It was just, I don't know. I don't know what they're doing there exactly. Bold take, but uh, we'll see how it works out. I should have checked the, the doc before you did. Yeah, you let me sneak that one in there, you know? I did. I let you sneak that. It, it was too easy, you know? I, I, I was not proud of myself writing that. I just want you guys to know. You I was just, be proud of I was just like, this is be. so it easy, was, but I have to do it. You shouldn't be. It was bad enough they put it in the trailer. <laughs> did they? Oh, I didn't watch the trailer. Yeah, that's right. They did was it just like a trailer. guy getting picked up to be slammed with like no one holding him up? No, it was It was like the, the first part of the trailer is that a fan comes up to take a picture of, of Bad Bunny and just floating cat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Poor John Cena, man. You know, it's, If I ever see that guy in person, I'm going to just be like, I can't see you. <laughs> you know, I'm sure he gets that all he the must, time. Yeah, too. he must get that every day. <laughs> He did it to himself. Must be horrible. <laughs> he did it to himself. Maybe it's not that bad though, because if you're like that famous, maybe you do want to be invisible. Yeah. You know, you're walking around the yeah. grocery store and it's just like can't see you. <laughs> uh, but I know Sims is the big WWE guy. Uh, On the release date thing is is it they're going for, and it's kind of understandable with releasing these in line with um, the WWE's big show of the year. Um, I always felt that they only released it around. Games were getting public. It makes more sense to, you know, release your big video game <clears throat> around your biggest show of the year. Yeah. Would so let me ask you this, Sam. This is, I guess, a little bit of a tangent. What do you think? Um, the uh, what's the other uh, AEW fight AEW forever? Game. When, when is that going to um, come out now? Because that was supposed to be at the end of last year. That was my thought. So I pre-ordered it um, because I was. I'm so looking forward to it. I'm a big fan of the company itself, and I was like, oh, you know, I can't wait to. Play a game of wrestling game that's not by um, a console wrestling game that's not by WWE. Apparently, it's in. There's been reports recently that it's in kind of, it's in a bit of a void um, at the moment. Um, the f- December um, this year is now when it's slated to come out. I we will have to wait with bated breath to see if it actually makes that release date or if uh, if they push it again. The thing with the thing with the, that game is that at the at least with the um, the WWE and because they're doing it as an annual franchise, you know, there's not too much. Sure, they're outdated, but they're not as outdated as the Fight Forever game is going to be. Because apparently, it's going to be more of a sort of. It's, it's a, apparently it's a weird live service, but it's more focused towards the uh, the single player stuff. So it's a bit of a weird thing there. Um, like there, there are people in that reported to be in the Fight Forever game that are no. And this has obviously obviously been a long problem for the WWE. Yeah, what, is is it? What's his name is still in it, right? Um, um Cody. Um, no, the other one. Uh, um, CM Punk. Uh, CM Punk. Still in it. Yeah, he's that, still that, in that, it, right? Yeah, that that's because he's still currently on a contract. Um, okay. And, and all that kind of thing, but you know, there's a with with the nature of the wrestling industry. There's people that could be, you know, there could be a, a decent chunk of that. I think they said it can be 50 people at the start, um, which is missing some of their big stars who are in the um, on the show at the moment. But it could be a case that a lot of them are gone by the time this fight for game eventually comes, ever does. Like, yeah, you know, there's apparently weird. a lot of like Ux is apparently struggling a lot with this development. Yeah, I guess it's development struggles, and from what I what I was uh, seeing is they are also struggling with the ESRB rating. Oh, um, I haven't I, heard about that. Yeah, so I think that they are shooting for a T rating, and they... I don't watch wrestling, but apparently, mm-hmm. I guess, AEW is kind of known for um, a little bit more, um, I guess, bloodier type yeah, of that's... events and stuff. And, yeah. like, uh, ESRB was like, yeah, you gotta... This is an M for mature. Yeah, and, yeah. And they're shooting for a T, so they're gonna have to, like... Mm-hmm. Ma- Ukes is probably gonna have to, like, scope back some of that blood, mm-hmm. maybe, mm-hmm. in order to hit that... I- it's interesting to hear that because the thing that's always kind of confused me about the the WWE games, the show's been PG for God, decade and a half, whatever it's been. Um, but the game has always been over here, a 16 certificate game. So I don't know what that is in. That's probably, probably an M. And it's a teen. Okay. Oh, it's a T for teen, probably. Um, yeah. So it's been a 16 like game up. here. But then, yeah, as you're right, you know, AEW is a, is a TV 14 show in the US. Um, 
which has much more branded itself to be more of an adult audience, aiming for a, a team team rating as well. I'd imagine that's just to compete with WWE's kind of. I think that's on, what it on is. Yeah. shelves for sales for sure. Yeah. Would that really affect it all that much if it was rated M? Like, I feel like um, wrestling fans wouldn't really care that, all that much. I suppose kids want to buy it and stuff. But yeah, like, yeah. It, it, it's young like, fans. If you were like 15, you couldn't just walk in and get that game. Sure. Right? I mean, I used like, to get away with that when I was 15 all the time. But like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. But <laughs> yeah, especially cool. today, though, with most games being bought digitally, you don't even see the rating yeah. when you're buying it digitally. Yeah. So it's like I don't. I yeah. feel like parents care less today than they yeah. even did back it, then. It right? is a bit. That is a bit bit peculiar. Yeah, I don't think that's something they need to really be worried about. Like, if ES- ESRB rates it M, like, I don't know, who cares? Like, yeah, put it out as M. That, that probably You could probably market it more that way, honestly. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, we got more blood than Lean WWE. Lean into the blood. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like, hell yeah, we the, got the, blood the and alcohol. Already, the TV product already brand itself as more of an edgier product than the competition. So go with that. That's like, you know, yeah. much more adult um, product on store shelves that's, you know, more suited to, because especially they're trying to harken back to a lot of, the older like early 2000s wrestling but like you know this is the kind of wrestling game you remember from a co- edgy company and that worked from the marketing perspective yeah exactly I, i'm kind of thinking along the same lines there all right guys that'll do it for the news this week busy week fun week mm-hmm. we'll now get into what we've been playing daniel you want to kick us off sure uh so i finally beat bloodborne um okay. Uh, thank you, thank you. Um, <laughs> where where I was, like no, I'm not no bragging, no bragging. You're gonna I brag. Th- I'm gonna brag about. <laughs> there are three fights I had left. Uh, after the so I beat the DLC. Uh, that was like going through the DLC and then finishing the game. What a day and night! All of the DLC bosses were so much harder than anything at the end of the game. Really? Like I went, I had three fights after I beat the DLC. Uh, uh, Orphan Akos, which is known to be one of From's, like, I guess one of their harder bosses. And it took me a little bit. It wasn't the hardest fight, I think, for me, personally, in the DLC, but um, I beat beat the DLC, and then went into... I had three more uh, fights after that. Um, I, I beat the next boss in, like, two tries, and then I go to the final fight. I had to get... I wanted to get the true ending of Bloodborne. And you basically have to fight German, which is, like, the guy in the wheelchair... He's like the first hunter. And then immediately you fight the um, the moon presence and you don't get any rest. Like you just whatever vials you had at the end of that fight, it's immediate. Um, and I just won, did it in one go. Just not even like I destroyed German. Used probably more vials than I wanted to. But then I like stun locked the moon presence. <laughs> I two handed my sword. I put like fire paper on it and I just kept whacking him and he just was stun locked and I, I beat the game. Wow. So I beat, One I break. technically beat every boss of Bloodborne except for one, which is at the end of the Chalice Dungeons, which I'm not going to do. I don't feel like doing the Chalice. It's interesting that you say that the, the DLC is harder than the, than the main game because I've heard, so let me preface this, I'm not, a, I've not played any kind of soul and not really my um unless talking about jedi fallen or which is like i guess like a souls type souls it's ish. Light, a light yeah. um i mean because star wars and anyway um it's interesting you say that because i've heard that bloodborne is like the hardest to um to, to beat and to say that the deals is even harder than that is like what, what, what from was doing were they just, you know checking <laughs> and in, um, um bosses with infinite health against you I haven't played them all, and I've beat three basically within this past year. Uh, Dark Souls 1, Elden Ring, and Bloodborne. Um, out of those three, I would say overall, I would say I probably had a harder time with Dark Souls because of you're a little more limited, but mm-hmm. at some points, the limit, the limitations also kind of affected everything. So yeah. at some points, it felt easier, um, but then it kind of had peaks of really hard. Like There were like a few bosses in Dark Souls that I had a hard time with Elden Ring I think overall was kind of like all the bosses were pretty consistently I would say challenging um, yeah. there were a few that were more but um, Bloodborne uh, th- there were like maybe five bosses I think overall it kind of gave me a hard time but and like I would say three of those were in the DLC <laughs> <laughs> if that tells you anything the, the um, true question of of, of us um, Souls like is how do the bosses compare to Ogdo Bogdo? 
Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, the um, who? Is Ogdo. The, the, Ogdo, Ogdo, <laughs> who the fuck the is big, that? Um, and July for the order, the um, oh, was that the frog on, thing? Yeah, frog. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I do remember and that. It's like you're, you're going to uh, take him on like way earlier to get out. <laughs> He's um, in that little hole. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, yeah. If you have to like go down in that thing, and yeah. Um, yeah, Bloodborne's incredible. Mm. I, my, I wish it was just in sixty frames. I don't know what they're doing over there. Oh, you, you don't need to do. It is not. It's it's only in thirty still. Like I don't know what they're doing over there. You don't need to. I don't care about 4K. Just pa- like f- put the game in 60. I mean, they did I that need. with the other ones. I know this one's on Sony, but it's like they the FromSoft already did this with all their other games. Yeah. They updated yeah. them for it just specifically so. To yeah, they did the it to Dark Souls Three. Yeah, um, I think yeah, all their games at this point. Um, yeah, just do it to Bloodborne. It doesn't make any sense. I'm not gonna go back now. I beat the game, but like, um, yeah. But um, I beat that, and then uh, I put about an hour and a half or so into persona three that was going to be my next game before um hogwarts um uh, i'm really enjoying it so far um it's on game pass um it's so the portable version of persona three is more visual novel and i really wasn't ready for that i didn't know it was So there are no actual regular cutscenes. It's all it, it's told more visual novels. So yeah, it feels yeah. more like a dang and rompa game. Um, but there are like you go into the big dungeony thing, and there is moving around in that. So there is actually like it so is like at any show. point are you like walking around like going to yes, school and stuff? It's in the dungeon. Yeah. It's in the dungeony thing. Okay. When you're going to school and stuff, no, that is all visual novel. Really interesting. Are there yes. still like choices? Yeah, uh, there is di- you're, dialogue. You're talking. Choices, there yeah. is dialogue, okay. just like a Persona Five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're you're, but you're not walking around the school. Sure. Um, the only place you are walking is in Tartarus, which is like. So do they do that in a more linear way than the school stuff, or is that just not even in there? Um. So you it'll pop out to the you'll see the school and you can click on things, and then like if you want to go to this room, you'll click on it, go to that room, oh, and you can gotcha. talk to people okay. from there. So like a so, map layout pops up and then you yes. click on it from there. Okay, cool. Yeah, and then you can talk to characters that way. It, it's still like you're not like uh, dialogue to dialogue to dialogue. Um, you are still selecting a few things, um, and then you go to Tartarus, and then you are a, kind of a top down, and you're moving your character, um, and you're attacking like these little slug things, and that takes you into the fight. Um, I haven't like fought a boss or anything yet, but um, I'm enjoying it. These characters are interesting so far um the the vibe of the music is is really cool um there is like i could tell that this was made in the 2000s because there is like one of the ambient themes it has like a hip-hop-y vibe and i love it it's it's kind of got because it, it it repeats so they can't just have like vocals so it it just has like do you do either of you know del the funky homo sapien no that was a whole lot of words though no. <laughs> okay you would you would know dell he is he um he has done stuff with the gorillas before okay um so if you know like um uh do you know feel good ink the song yeah yeah yeah, yeah. uh that the the the, the hip hop guy that's Dell the funky homo oh okay yeah. okay oh yeah um, yeah yeah he he is he's done a bunch with with the gorillas before um the the vocals kind of have like a Dell vibe and uh, okay. it's 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 really cool. It it has that two thousands hip hop vibe I like. Mm-hmm. Um and the yeah, the art style is pretty great. It it definitely it is a step back from Persona Five that I I, I just beat last year. Um but I want to experience it, so uh, I'm having a good time with it. When did this game originally release? It's a good question. I mean yeah, I Persona four was like two thousand and six Eight? i think so this was like oh, early 2000 even, even earlier, yeah. i think yeah, it was it's, six it's or seven psp i think wasn't it persona um three uh persona four how p was psp gold with the golden uh version i think they were both ps2 games Inter- here you go uh persona three originally came out in japan on july 13th 2006 yeah so actually yeah. a lot later than i would have assumed yeah north america not till 2007 so when was so 2007 four? Yeah. yeah four was they must have worked on four yeah. right away then. Four was two thousand eight, so they they got yeah. right on that. Yeah, then Golden was a little bit after that. It was like yeah, Golden or eleven. Golden was a straight up Vita game, right? So that must not have been till yeah. later. Um. Yeah, I I'm having I'm having a great time. Can't wait to get back. But I had to put that on pause 
because uh, Hi-Fi Rush came out and like that game's awesome. I only got to play a little bit. I wanted to play more last night, but I think we can Sloan open was... up here. We all played a little bit yeah. of this then, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Cool. Sloan stopped me. I was uh, like, oh, Bastard. you want to watch? You want to watch Bullet Train? I'm like, yeah, let's oh, watch. Now Bullet he Train. wants to watch Bullet Train. Wow. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> but uh, I'm enjoying it so far. Like, uh, I just kind of you were asking me some questions last night about you know kind of how I was feeling the game, even though I I only played like a little bit or whatever. And um, the main character Chai. Um, he kind of reminds me of a kind of a cheery Peter Parker a little bit. That's kind yeah. of the vibe I get from one him. of those oh, guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. That. yeah. he's, yeah. he's um, Marty McFly. You know, Marty all Mc... those guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you could he's name a, like twenty of them. He's just a really fun, charming character yeah. so far. I, I really like Chai. Yeah, so I know we all talked about how much we were into the trailer when they first showed it at the Velvet Direct and then just being able to download this right away. And I played probably the first hour. I don't know. I, I beat the first boss, so not to spoil too yeah, much. But yeah. I beat, I beat the... some big robot, and that was kind of when I <laughs> That's what I assumed it was the first boss. boss. Okay. It didn't I, have a boss name. Yeah, that's a good like point. A... I just assumed giant robot boss, whatever. Yeah. yeah. But... Okay, so yeah, I'm right around there. Yeah, Sam, did you get to there yet? I, I was only able to play the first 20 minutes because I'm, okay. I'm still waiting for my, my Series X to arrive. Um, yeah. So Ooh. I had to cloud stream it onto my one. And within the first, I got through the first 20 minutes and then it got to the point where the, um, the, de- the input delay was such that I wasn't able to hit combos and the screen tearing was pretty, pretty poor. Interesting. What um, are you playing on? On, on just on just on Xbox One. He's oh, doing okay, through cloud. Okay, gotcha. He's doing it through, oh, through cloud. Oh, you're doing it through cloud. So, so, so okay, it's having, gotcha, so it's having gotcha. to refresh the screen every kind of ten sure. or so seconds. You could also do that syncing up thing. There's a there's an option in the menus to sync up your controller. Yeah, I, the, I, I, I went through that. It's, yeah, I think I think my my, my three and my uh, Xbox One's a bit old. So I'm gonna wait until I get my my jump into it because I I thoroughly enjoy the bits. And I love the soundtrack. I love the the graphical start. I love the the whole world um it exists in. It's my only problem um, is, as I said, the, the latency, and also the. I think it's it's a little bit. Maybe it's because I've um, of another game that I've, I've been um, playing recently that I will get onto in a minute. Is that I'm I'm so used to kind of button mashing that kind of I'm, I haven't got quite my timing on yet. Yeah, one uh, of the robots. Like one of the robots. He's like a hint robot. He tells you like if you're doing like the standard X combo, as soon yeah. as you hit, press it immediate. Because then it, yeah. you always press every time it hits, uh, unless you're doing like the the heavy hit or whatever. On that too, with the combat, what I love about this game is that everything around you is on beat, so you know exactly yeah. when yes. to hit. Because there's so many little things around you. you even you get the little uh, 808 cat; he's blinking constantly to show you on beat. And then yeah. just everything around you in the environment, which is so cool, is just like everything moving is on beat. Even the enemies are on beat, so you know when they're going to mm-hmm. attack and when they're not going to attack and stuff like that. And that's a really cool aspect. I haven't really gotten the combat down fully yet. Like I still, I still need to work on my combos and stuff like that. Like I got the regular X light attack combo down and then the regular heavy attack down. I just need to get the ones where you're mixing it in together down more, but obviously I just yeah. need to play a lot more. But yeah, I'm, I've been loving this game so far. It's so need- cool. If you need help with the beat thing, I forget what button it is. I think it's the back button. There, like, pops yeah. up that thing where yeah, it, a meter yes, pops up. See yeah, a meter. If you need that, that, yeah, that it might help. keeps that up constantly. They really want to make it as easy as possible for you to understand the combat and get yeah, that beat yeah. and get that rhythm down, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. But yeah, what I've been y'all... loving, like, the, the, the cutscenes. The characters are so cool. Just this world seems very cool, very yeah, interesting yeah. to me. I just love everything about it so far. Mm-hmm. The other thing we should touch on is the soundtrack the choice of songs is perfect i love that opening the opening with the black was, keys let's yeah, go that was let's really go. cool i, I, I awesome. had the i had i had the lyrics going in my head just going, this is such a perfect opening for this game because we've had titles like this before was it metal hell singer whatever hell singer, that yeah. was last year yeah that, that heavy metal um shooter and i was like this is my version of that because it's like because it's like the kind of music i really like I think the difference there is I think Metal Hellsinger was all original music by famous musicians. And yeah, then this yeah. is like licensed mu- music that they're yeah. taking and, and, and working it in. Mm-hmm. So I guess it's a little different, but it definitely has that beat yeah, yeah. 
aspect. Yeah, Sims brought that up in the chat the uh, yesterday because he was like, oh, why are you guys so excited for this game when you couldn't get into Metal Health Slinger? And I was actually like thinking about that. And I think Metal Health Slinger was just not uh, as accessible with the beat and the rhythm and stuff. They didn't do yeah, a yeah. good job of, tutori- of tutorials and showing you how to get, get that rhythm down and stuff like that. Maybe being a first-person shooter, I don't know. Maybe I should go back and put a little bit more time to that game. But this, this version of that is really working for me with the combat and the rhythm and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It's also I, I I've not played the um I always meant to get into um Hellslinger but I just kind of n- never did. I wonder if it's the because from the very go of High for Rush, though as you say the world just gets you into this is how the world works. The beat is constantly in the background no matter what you're doing. It's um you know you've got a beat going and it kind of it works I think a bit better and the fact that it, you know it's all you know well-known songs from big artists it's potentially a bit more impressive than Helsing. obviously Helsing is a wonderful feat of games development and you know syncing everything up so well with the gameplay but the, you know you've got licensed songs that you know um Anglo Gameworks about to go right how do we pace this so the songs work so well within the world yeah I love that it's even they 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 narratively contextualize that too. Yeah, it's that his his like zoom. It's fucking a, uh, yeah. old shout out. That's zoom. what they should have like used. Zoom. They should have yeah. used that. Yeah. Microsoft that would have been cool. Yeah. Gets stuck to his chest. <laughs> so that is so we are experiencing what Chai is experiencing. So the world isn't beating all the time. He's yeah. just yeah. experiencing the world beating all the time. So like it's conte- It's like a narrative contextualization of like what he experiences and i think that's i think that's pretty cool um yeah like i, I know that there is a nine inch nails has a few songs in here can't wait mm. to experience nine inch nails in a <laughs> hack and slash game like i'm a character mm. action person right like they, i love all those games i think that's why it works for me connor because i like character action games i love dmc i love bayonetta um pretty much all any character action game yeah and yeah. uh this just fits the the style's great I love the cutscenes. Like they're so beautiful. One negative I will say, Danny brought this up in our Discord yesterday, but he moves a bit slow, you know, and, and it's yeah. just I wish it was more uh, fast paced with him, you know, like you kind of want to feel walk slightly faster. Yeah, That's walk it. slightly faster. Maybe give me a sprint button or something like that. I wish the mm-hmm. the dash went a little bit further. You get a dash a little bit later. I'm wondering if there's like upgrades or if you just unlock more stuff as the game progresses to make him move a bit quicker cuz he does feel just like a little bit heavy when you're moving and the, that I don't like, but everything else about it I just been absolutely I think the loving. dash is okay. I think if you could sprint, it would change how you feel yeah you could definitely. just sprint and then dash yeah and then yeah, it could yeah. make it go a little further yeah but yeah i've been loving the game thus far i think it's a really good kickoff to the year for xbox too like that's mm-hmm. an awesome way to just shadow drop this new awesome game and mm-hmm. it, for what should be a very big year for xbox mm-hmm. yeah As yeah said, we were like kind of title we want more of from you know a definitely. unique uh-oh uh-oh froze a little bit Something's unique. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, you kind of froze there, Sam. What, what were you saying? I was, sorry. Um, I was saying that I don't think from the top of my knowledge that Sony has one of those um, rhythm uh, action titles. So it's kind of, you know... It's, Parappa it's the yeah, Rapper. Hold up and go... <laughs> <laughs> very true. Yeah, very true. It's very true. Bring that back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the crazy thing is, as we've talked about, like Xbox's kind of output for these first six months, like it was going to be those four games, or no, yeah. I'm sorry, technically five games with Starfield. Like that's a pretty big for six months, and then they're like, we're sneaking in a sixth game um, that's going to be a first party um, uh, game, and then on top of all the uh, third party stuff, it's like that was, and it, and it was a it was a surprise drop. Like it's just like kudos to Tango GameWorks, like really, like. I think they got something special in their hands. I hopefully they don't like. I don't need Tango after this to like lean heavy into Hi Fi Rush. I don't need yeah, the second yeah. one in two years. I mean, it'd be nice to like. I'll, I'll take it. I mean, I was gonna say <laughs> I'll take a sequel to this, but I don't need to explode it, make it a triple A game, like make it a full seventy, sixty dollar game, whatever. Like, keep it what it is. Like, 
you know, way, uh, you, you understand what I mean? You're, no, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Keep it a mm-hmm. keep it a smaller, almost double A type of game. I, yes. I'm right there with you. Even if they do make a sequel, do that after yeah. your next big AAA game or something yes. like that. I think already though, I, I, this is my favorite Tango GameWorks game. Like I I've played a little bit of the first Evil with that, probably about half of it actually, a good amount. It was okay. It wasn't exactly what you wanted it to be. Ghostwire Tokyo again. I played half of it. Like that game. Like the setting and all that. Combat was a little off. But I'm playing this one and everything's just working for me. Me too. Yeah, yeah me too. I, I, I do wonder with. I kind of just want to add one quick thing. Um, it's interesting what you say about the, you know, we don't need to rush into a, a sequel straight away. I agree with that. I, I do wonder if there's a, putting my business hat on for a second, there's a really big opportunity here for Microsoft and Tango Gameworks. If they do kind of what, you know, what Fortnite, for example, has done and making, you know, having big artists perform concerts. And, like, you know, at least a couple of like bonus promotion levels or DLC levels with a specific artist, then, you know, that, because you know, with the types of songs they got in there, the songs that will would work perfectly with Hi-Fi Rush, and that could be a really cool promotion. You know, um, you know, this song as as seen in Hi-Fi Rush, and that then gets out there. That's just thinking with the, with the business. That's, that's an interesting idea. Yeah, that's a very interesting idea, actually. What if you did the sequel, like, hey, this band is debuting a new song in the game? Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean, or something like that. That'd be really cool. I just want to shout out to just the, uh, the 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 versatility of Tango GameWorks now. Now that they've shown they yeah, yeah. they they made a third person horror Resident Evil like game to making a, uh, a thriller Ghostwire Tokyo horror ish type of game again. First person shooter. Yeah, yeah, exactly <laughs> with first person elements, and then this, which is just completely different than both of those things. It's just that's great, man. That's awesome. Mm. That's what you want to see from all these studios. Mm. Definitely. Uh, what, what what my one thing was. It, it, correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe you guys didn't catch this. I'm not sure. Did I see um, Nakamura in there? Does she work on this game too? Is she still at Tango? Oh, I think so, yeah. Maybe I she, thought I, she might have just had to get credit, right? Because I know she hasn't been at Tango for a while, but maybe she did touch this game before she left, right? I want to look more into it. I thought I saw her name in the in the credits as, yeah, as it was it's going. Very like, possible, right? I mean, clearly this game's been in development for years, right? So has it? I see. I haven't seen. Have they talked about that? No, I'm just assuming, right? Like, it's not like they just made this game overnight. No, so, like, of course. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Sam, we'll continue with you. What other games have you been playing? Um, so, first, the, the other kind of broad I want to talk is one that I, I've had games come 2021, and that is Midnight Fight Express. Mm-hmm. Um, so, this is a... Cool it's name. A, um, yeah, yeah, it's a really cool name, and it's got a really cool art style. It's a... Uh, bro- re- I was going to say Rhythm Action, that's, that, that was high rush, um, Hi-Fi Rush. It's a brawler, and I believe it was made by one person. I think it's one dude. It's <laughs> yeah. got, and it, it's got a really, staying on the soundtrack, it's got a really, really, um, some really cool enemies. There are some frustrating levels. Um, there was uh, there was one kind of, because the game's got 40 levels. I um, I went was replaying it, and some of the, I think, I think, Eighth level is you've got to deal with basically you're on the tracks on um, of a rail system and there's two trains whizzing back and forth um, at certain intervals and there is times where you can just because you're dealing with such a large amount of enemies you get splattered by it um, and then there's a, a mission about four or a setting about four missions later where it's set in a um, a dockyard and there's this uh, crate hovering over that ran drop down in front of you and there are some ones where it gives you a split second to react and dodge out of the way that can be really really frustrating you get some um on some unnecessary deaths um but it's a really really fun beta i have a question about the game so mm-hmm. it look it when i when i saw this game it, it kind of reminded me of um uh hotline miami do you yeah. die as quick as Hotline Miami? Like Hotline Miami, you have no health. You're just, you just you no, get hit. No, you've got you've got a bit more um, health than in Hotline Miami. You can take a fair amount of damage, but um, there is, but because each uh, enemy has their own special attack, and there are obviously some of the more, well, some of the bosses and some of the more um, strong characters, they can take you down to about um, a third or even lower health. Um, so it's, you need to, it's one of the things you need to be really on it with counters. Okay. I've really enjoyed that. It's been, 
a, um, a really fun little game. And sorry, at Gamescom, because it's, as I said, you know, the fact it's made by one bloke is absolutely astonishing. Um, and then the other one is, um, I, <laughs> I feel like I feel like I'm I'm a bit sin here because this, the fact I've I've played and enjoyed this game goes against everything I previously believed. Uh -oh. um, I've really enjoyed playing Marvel Snap. Oh, it's, okay, it's okay. fine. I'm a card uh, game guy. It's fine. It's no, but it's the fact that it's a mobile game with microtransactions, which I used to I used to rile against. I still will because because most mobile games. Um, but now you're just a dirty hypocrite. Look at that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. It's <laughs> what have I become? Um, I I was shocked how how good it's how fun it's been. Um, I was initially very turned off by the game because. Of a very very aggressive um, marketing plan by the developers, um, with I think it's their studio director basically screaming at the top of his lungs about this new game they've had in development, um, and I was very he very hesitant to try. But I was uh, on the uh, game awards um, on a voice call with Tucker, uh, our friend from um, Battle of Banter, and a couple of. Um, his uh, friends and we were just chatting about it and it won mobile game of the year and i was like i, I think i mentioned or oh, i've been kind of and um i think it might have been one of the other people on the call was like actually give it a go it's really really good um and i really enjoyed the fact the matches are so quick and the strategies that you know the, the research on the fly strategies is actually a, an astonishing bit of game design i'd never played hearthstone but I, I, can great. See, I can see the the you know this is developer that has clearly mastered making that kind of card game. Yeah, I think my biggest issue with that game is honestly the brevity is great, and I like that they leaned into the brevity and it being very quick matches. Only mm. well, I think it's six rounds. I yeah. don't like my card games like that. I'm a Magic the Gathering player. I have all yeah, my decks yeah. right there. You can't really see them. Um, I like the strategy and like, I want to be able to, if I can make a deck that's quick, I can make a deck that's quick, or yeah, I can make yeah. a deck that is a little slower and combo focused. I like that stuff, which is a little yeah, bit even yeah. Hearthstone is kind of in between uh, compared to like magic and then snap Hearthstone's probably, you could do quick things. You can kind of combo and be a little slower, but you know, you got to keep it a pace with Hearthstone. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm yeah. way more slow and deliberate and I prefer the more customization. There's a, little less you could do because there's only uh i think it's 12 cards in snap it's not a lot you you can't really uh try a lot of different things it's kind of you just got to make a bunch of decks i guess mm -hmm. i think i absolutely get what you mean um you know on my on my psp go which i've got somewhere here um i've got the Yu-Gi-Oh tag force 5 game and that is that is like that it's longer battles and that kind of thing and I, i'm i'm in a situation where i enjoy both i it very much depends on the mood I'm feeling. Um, yeah. You know, when I just need a quick burst, I can get through um, a, a Marvel Snap game in, in you know, a couple of minutes. But when I want something a lot um, longer and more strategic, I can sit down and just, you know, play on, on my PSP Go and, you know, properly plan out my, my strategies. Um, that being said, I'm also... I'm not enthused about, you know, as much as... It does microtransactions better than any other mobile game. I still hate the fact it's got microtransactions. Um, the fact oh, yeah. that they lock and, and as much as much as it is just cosmetic and the and the card ability stay in regard to the variant you get. Um, and the fact that there are some really cool um, variants that are locked behind a paywall is absolutely um, awful. In, in, in my opinion i understand obviously they've got to pay their bills somehow and all that kind of thing um, um what even but... bothers me too is the randomization of the unlocks like yeah you might have a card that you got really early that like really maybe helped you with like a deck that you liked but i haven't seen that card ever or, you know yeah, whatever yeah. or it took forever for me to get that card it's like yeah that just makes that just makes our experiences so much different and like yeah, i just yeah. don't like that it, it, it feels weird to me that's, it's a brilliant point because I, I, I in all my online games, playing people that had the, the Captain America card, and it took me till um, collector level like two hundred and forty something to actually unlock that card. And I'm like, it's it's a brilliant point, you know, that that makes it inherently a level of, you know, 
of, of our of our experience is going to be different playing that game. You know, if I've got a card that another player hasn't, like you know, for example, the the Iron Man card, which which doubles your um, which doubles the attack on the location. If someone hasn't got that yet, then they're going to be at a significant disadvantage when when it comes to the to the final phase of the game. Um, there are definitely things that need to be that could be a lot better in Marvel Snap, and I also feel the this new um, PvP thing that they've got coming this year. I'm not sure kind of what it's going to bring. So I think it's like against friends, but also I have a feeling they're going to slightly tweak with something about the um, the progression system. I've just got I've got this itch um, in the back of my head because it's a mobile game. Um, but yeah, I mean, they might have like a like a a ranking system like yeah you yeah. play against silver players and then gold players and then platinum players it might be something like that actually sam is there any big games coming out soon that you're looking forward to um oh the only thing i can think of is um jedi survivor because yeah. i loved um jedi fallen order um and in terms of i'm i'm a little bit annoyed at the way they appear story that it's five years on and we don't get to see like what happens in the immediate aftermath of you know cal destroying the holocron and all that kind of thing i want to see kind of go right where do we go from here um is it interesting because they ended that game with like such a set hey here's the group yeah. here's the team we're gonna go off and do adventures and stuff and now it's, yeah, it's like yeah. five years later everything went to shit it's like whoa yeah, okay yeah. <laughs> what happened it's like it's like we're we even gonna see um grease on merit are, are they even gonna be in the game or are they just you know they that you know, Greed went to go and do gambling on some. Um, <laughs> Vader got I, him. Hopefully, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna yeah. get this crew, especially how that that it, like we gotta get the crew back. I think like like how that game ends with like, oh, we're together and we're gonna go yeah, off yeah. adventures. Like, I don't think that they're just gonna not you know keep that mm -hmm. together. You yeah. know, I ho I hope you're wrong, but um, I hope you're right. I should say. But I, th I think the way they've the way they've um, put together the trailers doesn't um, hasn't filled me with confidence. Yeah, I guess we'll just have to see, right? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it'd be very interesting that game. Uh, for me, I've just been playing. Uh, we talked about Hi Fi. Uh, the, the, that's probably gonna be my main game going on. I, the Dead Space remake comes out tomorrow. I got that preloaded. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited for that. So I got two reviews games. like dropping like right before. We were yeah, reviews came yeah, out. Yeah. I think it's sitting at 89 on Open Critic right now. So I, it I seems like they nailed it. Yeah. Oh, I've really? By that. I I had it tagged to fail. Really? Why? Wow, yeah. I don't know about that. That's, a, that's pretty I, because, harsh. Because I had a I had a I had a feeling that um you know these these titles that I mean I think it's mainly because of um GTA Definitive Edition. I was like, you know, mm. these these bring, bringing back that you know these old older games and trying to make them for a mod. It's you know it doesn't it hasn't typically gone well. And um, I, I had a sense that I've been pleasantly surprised. Yeah, it's it's reviewing very well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, very high. So I'm very excited for that too. Then we got you know a, a bunch of stuff coming up soon. Uh, but I mostly been playing Persona Five Royal on my Nintendo Switch. That's uh, mostly what I've been doing, yeah. Got back into that. It's my third time trying this game, so I have played through Where what I've at? already played through now. I'm at the end of the first uh, yeah. castle. The, the uh, Kamoshida's castle? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I'm right at the end there. Pretty much all last weekend, I had I was playing that, and then I had uh, that 90s show back you know, on in the background, so I was just doing that the <laughs> whole weekend. That show's horrible, by the way. Don't watch it. Or do. <laughs> <laughs> I watched the whole thing and loved it, and I was like, that was awful. But uh, <laughs> nonetheless. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um. But no, nonetheless, uh, Persona Five. I mean, you know it, you love it. It's a it's a great game. I'm having a good time thus far. I can't wait till I get into new stuff again. But uh, yeah. this is just gonna be my game that I play in the background for a while while all these big AAA games come out. So I'm sure, I'll talk about I've, it more. I've got Persona Five and Yakuza Six loaded on my on my Xbox because they're two yeah. titles that franchises that you know I've heard a lot of good things about and need to try at some point. Yeah, you're yeah. gonna jump to six Yakuza Six. Why would you I, jump to six first? I, I jumped to seven first, so it's it's whatever. <laughs> six is like uh, nearing Kiryu, one of the, like the end of Kiryu's story. Don't jump to six, Sam. Don't jump to six. Either start with okay. zero or start with seven. That's okay, what I would I mean, suggest. I've, I've got I've got them all obviously as part of Game Pass. So I, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Let's zero zero's with... a zero came much later, but it is a prequel, okay. and then seven is later it is in this timeline like it is the furthest but it is a new character and stuff 
yeah, um, yeah. I would say start with zero and then go yeah. to one, and two, one, and then two, move three. on. Yeah. Okay. And then go to seven. Um, you could just start with one and then play zero in between. When did zero come out? In between, I guess zero before six. I think is when it came out. You could do that if you wanted to. I I started with zero and it was perfectly fine. Um, that's what I would suggest. Don't start with six though. Six is not a good starting point. <laughs> Uh, just touching back on Persona real quick. I just, yeah. It is working so much more for me on hand. Maybe not so much more, but, like, I got burnt out both times I tried it on PlayStation. You know, it's just I got, like, 30, 40 hours in, and I was just like, every day with this, you know? It's just I think it's going to really work for me handheld, just being able to put nice. it down, pick it up, and then yeah. have being able to play other triple a games in the background i, think, I was gonna uh, say you, you think it works better in those shorter bursts yeah like, yeah you know? exactly just being able to pick it up every weekend just play it for a couple yeah. hours put it back down and then just do this it's probably gonna take me like a year to beat but <laughs> nonetheless That's a good year though <laughs> yeah yeah exactly it'll be a good year then the next year i'll move on to persona 4 or whatever and uh yeah it'll be a good time just constantly playing persona so i want to say this connor yeah you're, cha- you're changing i have got more into turn base <laughs> you're changing since we've done this you're, show. you're like yeah, an yeah, rpgs more sure. That's for sure. JRPGs. I've always been an RPG guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're becoming a weeb more, and it makes me. Uh, Yeah, I'm (laughs) I'm not watching anime, Daniel. I'm not doing it. (laughs) You said you said Neon White had a good story. Neon White did have a very good story. story. Okay, okay, I'll give you that one. It's a self a self congratulatory pat on the back from you, Dan. That you you made (laughs) the You turned me into a weeb. I'm gonna do the Naruto run. All right, well, guys, we are out of time here. That's going to do it for the Nerd Gods podcast, episode 154 or 5. I forget which 55. one we sell selling 155. off. 55, <laughs> that'll do it. Uh, Sam, do you want to pimp out your stuff more? Sam over at Bloody Brilliant Games. Yeah, so come and check us out um, at Bloody Brilliant Games on YouTube. Of the games using some stories we've talked about today. Uh, we also do, as I said, we've got in the pipeline coming up, um, ev- uh, event coverage and also potentially reviews depending on our schedule. Also check out on Twitter at Bloody Brill Games uh, for updates on the content and also um, me pimping out uh, the link to every week's video just to try and get the numbers up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. Um, I I do want to say right real quick right before we yeah. go. Uh, next week is our three year anniversary of the show. Is it really? Oh, right. Yeah. Three know, years will be next year. Next week. Damn, three years. I've known you that long. I gotta get rid of you at some point. <laughs> Actually, it's been longer than three years. <laughs> oh you know? my god! <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... Someone kill me, please. Put me out of my misery. <laughs> but no, please go check out Sam over at Bloody Brilliant Games. Thank you so much for coming on, Sam. You're welcome back yeah. anytime. Thank you, Vince. It's an absolute pleasure. All right, cool, awesome guys. See you later. Bye, everybody. Bye.